Hello, everyone. My name's Jamie. I'm from All Movies Fresh. Uh, so as mentioned previously, we're adding a new segment into our blog, which is actually interviewing cast members from the shows and movies that I've recently watched. Today, we're joined by Coach John Mosley from Last Chance U Basketball. Uh, so how are you doing today, Coach? Doing OK, Jamie. Just yeah. uh, staying busy. A lot of people have reached out and we've connected and so it's been good. You know, the pandemic is kind of still still got us on a little semi shutdown. So I got time to, to still kind of reach out and speak to those who reach out to us. Fantastic. Uh, first off, I want to say congratulations for actually winning the SEC North Coach of the Year last year. How does that feel to win the Prezizes Award? You know what? It, it's, it's been great. Uh, the last couple of years, we've been able to win uh, numerous awards. I think the last thing was to try to win that state championship here in California. And, and this was the best year to do it. Or I shouldn't say this year. I keep referring to this year, but last year was the best year to do it. And, yes. and we ran into the COVID uh, roadblock and even my son, man, in his high school, I mean, just everybody ran into it in regards to basketball or, or spring, any spring finishes here in California, we kind of ran into that. So, you know, when Netflix called you up and said, right, coach, we're going to do the documentary on ELAC. How were you feeling after that? Well, initially, I didn't want to do it uh, oh. because I was, you know what? I, I had a nice little world. I was nice and private, and I had my team, had good success, yeah. uh, became a tenured faculty member. So, you know, my kids are great. Family's great. We're kind of a little, you know, it's interesting that we, we're a little private. And yes. I told him, I said, we're going to be boring because we don't, we don't look, I'm not as way out. I'm not as entertaining as some of the other coaches and, and they said, no, it'll just be a mirror of you and it'll be fine. And they thought it'd be great. And so I think it was my a friend of mine and my pastor initially said, no, I'll go ahead and yeah. do it. It'll based on how I live my life. I, I didn't think it was something that I should be doing as a, as a Christian or whatever. And, and then all of a sudden it's like, no, it, it's something that those people can see how your life is and see how you live your life. And so uh, and my pastor told me to do it and, uh, you know, and then we did it, but initially I didn't, I, I really didn't want to do it, but. Uh, okay. Turned out for the best. Yeah. That's you know, that's interesting to hear, to be honest. I mean, it's like it's listening to yourself and listening to uh Coach Beam as well. There's a lot of similar characteristics between you two. Mm -hmm. You know, you're quite allowed and you want to get to the point on there, and all the mm -hmm. players have the respect for you. I think what we found out the most was you when you were starting before the games, you were doing a prayer, regardless of uh, the players' beliefs, they all still had that respect. How did you gain that respect from the players? Well, you know, we got this thing like, hey, you can do whatever you want yeah. uh, and however you believe, however you feel. Uh, similar to like, I think it was a part in the show when when we were in the vans and yes. how that came about is they say, hey, Coach Mosley, can you can you put our song? Can you plug in our song in the aux cable? <laughs> plug in our music. And I say, sure, go ahead. How many songs you guys want to play? <laughs> yeah, they play one or two. So then it's OK. If you play one or two, I get to play one or two of mine. Fair so enough. That's, that's kind of the relationship that we have. I don't throw anything on them, my beliefs in regards to my faith. But if you come at me with uh, how what your logic or your philosophy is about how we should be living our life, then I'm going to share with you, well, here's what I have. And then also, I like to just share what I have to offer. If I see someone burdened or someone that's struggling or someone that's not looking right or not feeling yeah. right uh, emotionally, and if they come to me, if they need a shoulder to cry on, which mm -hmm. they do often, and behind closed doors, I share with them what gives me strength, what gives me the ability to continue on, what helps me. You don't have to believe what I believe, but you know, if if you under our program, then you'll be blessed because I think if I'm obedient, everything will be all right. Uh, to, what we've seen is uh, both you, Coach Robinson, Kenneth as well. It, you targeted all areas, so if you needed that, like that shoulder to cry on, uh, there was one scene where I think Joe walked out. And he went into the change rooms and he was bashing everything off. And then uh, Kenneth, Coach Kenneth came in, calmed him down, brought him back yeah. in, straight into the game and smashed it. So that's yeah. a massive thing to see. I mean, how is it working with such a good, unique team? Yeah, you know what? Being like-minded, man, it helps a lot. That's a, a major part of the success. And I think in any corporation, any business, any anything that has success, yes, where there's a group of people that work together, you're all like-minded working towards the same goal. And so... They have the same heart as I do. They yeah. want to see just young men do well and have success. They, and then on top of that, to be able to win basketball games, that's the goal. So from a basketball perspective, from a people perspective, we have the same uh, philosophy. We have the same heart in the sense we want to help those young men. So 
that's what makes it easy to work well together. And, and uh, you know, when I'm looking at coaches or looking for coaches, that's what I, I look and see if you have that sincere heart that, that, that we all, if we can share that same like-mindedness. Yeah. yeah. That's, are you guys back to training now or are you still on uh, lockdown? Los Angeles is maybe the worst in, in the world. We're still, oh, wow. I still haven't been able to get in the gym. It's been over a year now. So uh, in regards to being able to get in the gym, yes. we had the worst, worst numbers at one point. And we're just in an area where there's, it's just weird, man. <laughs> it's, so so it unfortunate. We're, yeah. we're, we're in an area where we need to be engaged with our students the most. Definitely. And we have the less than less engagement. So it's yeah. tough, but you know, whatever God says, it's going to happen. So we'll just, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I mean, what sort of like the uh, next stage for the players now, because there's, they're, they're going to struggle to give out scholarships on the basis. How do they judge players to give a scholarship to the next league? Yeah. Well, about 10 of those guys that were in the show are already moved on and they have yeah. scholarships and playing at the next level. Yeah. But now when you talk about the new guys that came That's into it. the program, uh, you know what? Uh, the good part is we, we have a reputation. So we may have a chance to get our guys pushed out of the door. Yes. And get scholarships a little bit better. But okay. at the same time, we're all going to suffer. All of the kids at the community college, all the young men, at the, all the kids at the high schools yes. are going to suffer because, you know, the universities are giving players an extra year, which means those scholarships won't open. So, you know what? It's hard to say. We'll see how that plays out as we move forward. I'm a little nervous about that because, you know, the young men, they come and I almost guarantee that's one of my pitches. I say, look, I'll guarantee if you do what you're supposed to do, I'm yeah. going to get you a scholarship and you're going <laughs> to move on. I'm going to help you move on. And you know, that's one of my pitches. And I'm, I'm a little uh, worried because that's something that I, I usually pride and get excited about. Not the wins as much as getting excited, yeah. excited about the young men come in with doubt. And then they that's go exactly. out with all of this hope. Like, man, I can't believe I got a scholarship. And so yeah. that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned about. And we got just got to see what's going to happen here. What, what got you into coaching in the first place? What made you decide, I want to go into coaching? You know what? I, I think when I graduated uh, or when I was finishing up, what happened is I went to play. Uh, I went over to Brazil, did a mission trip, and then I played a little bit. And then I went to Aus Australia and played. And it was like okay. second, second division oh, wow. in Aus Australia. Yes. So went over there and played. And then... Uh, I came back home and I was going to go back, but I had one class I needed to finish. And my college coach said, Hey, I'll pay for your one class. If you come sit on the bench, <laughs> when I sat on the bench with my college coach, I kind of got to see it from the coaching side of it. Okay. And then I, you know, all the little tricks that the coach used to do. And, you know, it, it was like the coach was the enemy. They were like the back in the day, they're like the police or they're like the referee. Yeah. So, you, but when you get on that side, you kind of see, yeah. the impact that he was having and you saw the strategies and th different things that he was doing to help impact us as players and impact the game. And I felt that to be interesting. And I saw that I had a, a kind of a knack and a gift for it. Yeah. And then I stayed on for the whole year. And then eventually he gave me, he paid me to stay on. And I was like, Oh, this is a career. I can do this. So uh, I don't know. I thought I was going to go off and be something else, but uh, that's, that's kind of how it started. I started off. I think he saw yeah. something in me and he just started yeah. me off as kind of like, come on volunteer. I'll pay for your class, and I oh. kind of stuck with it. Because you were actually you actually played for Elac um, when you were younger in your college days, and you were actually averaging eleven point one per game, which was the uh, highest, wasn't it? Is that correct? Yeah, the assist. So yeah. I grew up in the eighties watching Magic Johnson with the Lakers, and he was all big on, you know, in the early in the eighties, it was passing the ball like assist was popular. Now it's like yeah. scoring is super popular. But so I grew up that way, and so I was a big, kind of my philosophy yeah. my mindset in terms of going into basketball was the Magic Johnson, the Lakers when it was Magic Johnson, Kareem. And That's it. Was, it. You know, where it was showtime, where it was passing the ball and fun and moving and fast yeah. breaking. And so that's kind of my inspiration. And I kind of bring that to, you know, to the game of basketball. That's the way I picked up the game of basketball. It wasn't from a scoring perspective. Mm -hmm. It was from a high level team Yes. Uh, functioning perspective. And then, you know, my, my four-year college coach at the master's college, I, yeah. I, I learned a lot more. And, and, you know, as he mentored me into coaching, it, it kind of shaped who I am as a coach, you know?
that's true. I mean, to be honest, what I in my review, I actually re- referenced you similar to the real life coach Carter. Um, <laughs> you know, disciplinary is yeah. uh, the key factor for these kids, and regardless, you know, of uh, the, the things you would say to them, they would still have respect for you. Um, what would you say to this resemblance in Coach Carter? Yeah, I can I can say see that. Um because I think he really cared about them as people yes. versus the basketball. Yeah. And, and I think that's, when you do that, I think that's a recipe for success when you can really care about the person. And then now they see they you care about them. They'll, they'll go through a wall for you. And I think, I think that's that good. when you talk about the resemblance, yeah. Uh, I guess you could say we both have a ball. Oh. Head, <laughs> you know, he's, but uh, in specific, <laughs> Yes. Caring about people, and then I'm gonna, you know, the the players that I'm coaching, African American males. So yeah, yeah, the 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 black males, I'm really caring about as well, and it, it, and I'm able to speak to them because you know I come from the same place that they come from, and and so yeah, man, I can see it, I can see it. It was a, I was I was actually watching the video. Funny you saying about the African Americans when you said, and then you also mentioned Mark as well. I mentioned and Mark because then- <laughs> I was I was saying like, hey, man. Nobody, nothing's going to be given to you. Nobody's going to respect you. You're African-Americans. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, Mark, too, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> Do you still keep in contact with the players at the moment? Oh, I keep in contact with all of them, man. We yeah. text and everything, yeah. That's I mean, good. throughout their careers, they go to other universities. Yes. They go to four, four-year universities and play. And okay. then they call me and ask for help after they play and ask yes. for anybody. They need jobs and different things like that. So, yeah. We stay in contact, man, as, as much as we can. I think that's the way forward, isn't it? Keeping that contact because they can always look to you, not just as a coach, but as that father figure. Because, I mean, yes. it's like, you know, uh, we've seen a lot of the players like Joe um, and all these other players that, you know, that, that look to you as that father figure. And I said that to say with Coach Beam as well, that how they look not just as you as a coach, but also you as a father figure to help them, guide them through life and take the next steps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they're still young men and yeah. I've had the ability to be an adult like for several more years than they have. So yes, I got some offerings up and if they know that I care. So they always reach out and I try to offer them the best advice as possible and, and truly uh, changing their response to life, you know, That's making true. sure they have the right response to the adversity that they're going to still have. That's something that we try to instill while they're you, while we can use basketball to help them shape their responses to adversity. But, you know, they still call me. There's guys, man. Hey, the guys, what's funny is the guys, they come sit behind the bench. The former players, they got their degrees and they got their arms crossed, man. They're <laughs> behind the bench and they're like, Coach Mosley, these players don't, they're not listening, man. These kids, they're hard headed. And I'm looking, I turn around, I'm like, you was the same way, man. Exactly. You know? That's it. That's yeah. true. But now uh, they got all the answers and they're all mature. So they it's kind of a fun little family. It's good. It's good. I think you get to watch them grow up as well. I mean, I was I, I look at them on Instagram to see where they were now. Um, and, you know, pandemic aside, watching, you know, from the, they got to document majority of the season anyway, up until it got cancelled. Um, it was a successful season, would you not say? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was a great season. It was probably, you know, it was amazing. And they picked my best year ever. Now, I've had some great years. Yes. We made it to the state championship before. But yep. this by far was the best team that I've had in terms of a group that I felt like they really, really connected with one another. Yeah, uh, it was it was amazing, and 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 just all the characters and all the journeys, and all the successes of the journeys. To me, the most the most success. Like at the end, I told the guys, "You guys won," and the reason why I said yeah. they won is because they kind of culminated, they matriculated into, they know how to respond to adversity, and that's all I was mm-hmm. trying to get get them to. And you know what? We didn't get a chance to play in the final championship game, but they at least responded. They know how to respond. And guess what? They all responded well to the pandemic. They're all at universities. They all cried a little bit. Yeah. We all got, we all got down and sad. That's true. But then we picked, we picked ourselves up right after uh, the couple of weeks or a month after the pandemic. And we said, okay, it's time to move forward. Let's go to this university, that university. And so, so it was a success, man. And that's really the, I mean, all, I mean, heck, we didn't lose a game. Everybody loses a game, but, but one true. team. Everybody loses their last game, but one team <laughs> and the championship. And, hey, we didn't lose our last game. So I mean, uh, you, you were on a 25-win uh, streak, weren't you? Is that correct? Absolutely. 
Yeah, we're just going and going, and and it was amazing. We had we had the good players. Yes. So we don't discount that. We had the great chemistry that was happening, uh, and then we had the momentum. And I think the guys were excited. I think even with the filming, the guys wanted to show well while we were being filmed. You know, it was it was uh yeah, it was so it was amazing. I think what what a lot of people had learned the messages as well is you know these guys have come from a background where a lot of you know a lot of dangerous things occur like crime and stuff like that but they've actually chose that you know regardless of what you have you can still make it to that next level and yeah. you know all these players have demonstrated it in there and they've come from rough backgrounds but they're still shown and proven to yourself and the league and also the whole world what they're capable of yeah absolutely man I, to me I get most satisfaction out of that. Yeah. You mentioned, hey, you got coach of the year. Yes. You guys won the South Coast Con. You know, to me, the best reward I can get is when I see those guys playing at the next level and they move on and they're having yeah. success. And I still worry about them and wonder, mm -hmm. hey, are they going to fall off at the next place that they're at? And when they continue to make progress and get their, their bachelor's degrees and different things like that, then to me, I'm, I get satisfied and I smile mm -hmm. and almost shed a tear more so than us winning championship games. So, yeah, that, that to me, from where they come from and the adversity, because I see me yes. and all of these young men, I can see myself. Yeah. I can see some of the struggles that they're going through. I was going through the same struggle That's true. years ago. Mm -hmm. I can see the reactions, the responses, yep. uh, how they act out. That was me. I was acting the same way. So I had to have a little patience and realize, you know what? That was me. I remember acting that way. Let me help them through this process. And when they meet those goals and all that, man, I, I, I almost shed a tear almost every time. And the goals that they meet could be three, four years from now. They could get married, yes. have careers. And I'm like, man, to me, that is the best. That's the most gratifying. I, that, that's the thing. I mean, we've seen it. You know, there's a lot of uh, things we learned from, from Last Chance You. I think um, I, I enjoyed watching the series so much. It was a fantastic thing as well to see. Uh, and Coach B was saying last week that you and him are both friends. How did that come about? Well, immediately when I decided to do the show, I called, I said, hey, my football coach, who's my athletic director, yes, he he knows Coach B really well because, you know, they're football guys here in California. Yes. And then I said, man, put me on the phone with him, man. I got to ask a lot of questions before <laughs> I jump into this thing, man. And so since then, like right when I committed to doing it, I called him. Yeah. I would ask him several questions. He would give me advice on, you know, like, hey, do this, don't do yeah. that. And so he guided me. So it, a lot of the success I'm having or uh, of the show, you know, I got a lot of, you know, a lot of it from him as well, you know. That's so it. I would ask questions from him like, hey, man, how did this go down? How did that go down? You know, exactly. I think the thing is, as well, it's um, it's not these players that it's not just their last chance. It's their first chance as well. And, yeah. um, you know, I'm watching the documentary when I first watched it. I was like, oh, this guy, you know, is, is a bit overreacting. But once you watch it, you actually understand why you are because he, you know, the players, some of them were looking at you like, why is he shouting for? Why is he this? But then you yeah. said, look, I'm not doing it for myself. I'm doing it yeah. for you guys. And yeah. I think that was the important message. And that's what I also mentioned. And I said, give this documentary a try. It's not just for athletes. It's for everyone yeah. to watch. For everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's what I love so much about it. But in your aspect, if you were to offer, if, if the NBA were to call you up and say, look, coach, we want you to manage any team, which one would it be? To manage a team in the NBA? Yeah. Yes. Oh man, it's got to be the Lakers, man. I'm a Laker fan. Lakers fan through so, and through. Yeah, for, for through and through. Yeah. I know exactly the DNA and what what the 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 Laker DNA is, man. And okay. The family business, and I've I've watched the players all the way since I can remember in the early. So I started. I think it would might have been 1982, man. I'm getting. I'm showing you how old I am, but 1982 <laughs> when I can really watch it and understand it. I think the Lakers might have been playing in a championship game versus uh, uh, Philadelphia 76ers with Dr. J. And that's when me and my dad, you know, what well, my dad always watched, but I started watching. And then yes. you started to get the Magic Johnson, Larry Bird rivalries. And yeah. they, everybody talks about how that built up the NBA. It started the this marketing campaign for the NBA with the Magic Johnson versus Bird rivalry. Yeah. And then as it started to build up, that was that was, uh, you know, that's the team, man. It's the Lakers, man. I'm right here in LA. I grew up, yeah. I grew up five, five minutes away from where they used to play in the, in the form. So okay. I used to sneak in and 
that's when you used to be able to sneak in. Back in the day, you could sneak in those yeah, places, you know, <laughs> and then and then the players will walk out and you get autographs. Okay. Now everything's so protected and it's that's it. It's difficult. You know, you, it's difficult now. Everybody's so starstruck. Yeah. Everybody's got a bodyguard. You can't get around. I remember, man, just walking in, going down a tunnel where the cars drive down. Nobody went down there. They went to the game, but me yeah. and my family, my, we would just sneak down there. And then after the game, I shake hands with Magic Johnson. Like it was no big deal, you know? That's so, amazing, yeah. that is. I mean, it, to be honest, I think that's what uh, also helps influence sports as well is having that, you know, it's always that father and son bond. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's the same with myself as well, you know, watching uh, football, America, well, soccer that you guys call. Um, mm-hmm. And you, when you grow up, it sort of gets you into it and you can pass it down onto your kids. And we see, you know, in the documentary, you and you, you teaching your daughter uh, the basketball, like you teach uh, the guys as well. I mean, yeah. that's it's it's you're managing your personal life, but also managing your work life. How was that? Is that was that difficult? Yeah, well, and that's part of the reason why I'm here. Everyone asks yeah. me, why are you at the small community college? Well, yeah. this gives me an opportunity to be home with family. Yeah, and even now, I've gotten offers to go to big universities oh, okay. and coach. Uh, but I have a faculty position where I'm mm-hmm. teaching, so it's a decent salary. Yes. And right now, my the, you know time is too precious for my children. I got my my son is a sophomore in high school. Yes. He's playing well. My daughter's a freshman in high school. She's starting basketball. Okay. And my youngest daughter is softball. You know, okay. so it, we can have all that. And yes. uh, you know, I want to be a part of that. And I think, uh, like I shared, my daughter, I was away when I was at the university and I yeah. was traveling all the time. And she just shared, she said, I walked in the house with a bag and she said, daddy, you're staying at our house tonight. Yeah. And that broke my heart. She didn't think I lived there. I was gone so much. She didn't think yeah. I lived there, you know? So, uh, I don't, I don't like that feeling. Uh, yeah. I want to be able to make the impression. It's, it's not worth it, you know, to go make some more money or to be on this you know, this stage where you're on television more, it's mm-hmm. not worth it to sacrifice it. I'd rather spend that time with family and kids. That's, I think that's the key as well. It's managing, you know, it's not just about the money. And I think a lot of people also need to realize that as well, but it's also about your family life and your personal mm-hmm. life as well and creating memories between your family. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, so, and that that's, that's, this is the time they need us most. When they get a little older, great. maybe at the end of high school or out yeah. of high school, then, Maybe I'll consider, but right now they're young. So everything they do, every time they come home or as I'm teaching them, they turn and look to me, which I'm happy. There's yes. some kids that don't turn and look at their parents. They, they're they off gone and they're, you know, so for right now, my kids are not, we're all in a good space. We're still close. So I'm yes. happy about that. So while they're still looking to me for advice and insight and, yep. and help, I, I don't want to disappear. That's- and assume, I don't want to assume that they're going to always be my kids. No, they're in a couple of years, they're not going to want to hear what I have to say. So while I have a chance, I can keep pouring into their lives and keep feeding, uh, you know, all these messages and teachings into their lives before they stop listening to me. You know, they're not going to listen to me in a couple of years. So that's it. They listen to the father who's a, you know, who's a successful coach and also a successful player as well. Um, so one final thing to end ending the interview today is uh, what would what would your advice be to future athletes or athletes in that position who want to make it to the top level? Yeah, it sounds cliche and it yep. sounds really simple, but it's really a level of commitment and work that you have to do. Yes. And I tell everybody who walks through the door to play for me, I say it's going to be hard. Like I said, it's hard. It's, it's really hard. Yep. And they say, yeah, coach, I got you. I understand it's going to be hard. I said, no, you really don't understand what I'm telling you. It's going to be the hardest ever. And my players that move on, even to universities, they say, uh, with me is the hardest that they've ever uh, had to deal with in their time with basketball. And I do that for a reason, because I want to put them in every adverse situation so that when they get to the next level and move on, that they won't quit. So I think you have to challenge yourself. You have to work that hard. Yep. As hard as you can work, you got to put the time in. And I think they say a, a 10,000 hours makes a professional expert. So you got to put the hours in yeah. to become that, that, that professional or to be, to get to that level that you want to, you have to put the hours. There's no way of getting around it. If you want to be a great ball handler, you got to put hours into it daily, not just a couple of mm-hmm. times a week. If you want to be a great shooter, 
you got to shoot five to to a thousand shots a day. Like yeah. that's what Steph Curry. Steph Curry does that. That's I true. mean, everybody wants to shoot like Steph Curry. You know what sucks is a kid who'll get in the game and yeah. he tries to shoot that eighty footer, and yes. it's like, man, Steph Curry is shooting that five hundred times a day, exactly. practicing it, and you're not practicing it, but you want to go ahead and make that. It's not happening. So you got to respect the game, man, yeah. enough to know that it's going to take hours to be that good, to do a Kyrie Irving, to do the James Harden moves. It's it, it's not like I'm going to just go out there and do it. Respect the game and know that it takes hours and hours to, to put in time to do it. And that's what I would say, man. Don't expect anything else if yeah. you're not respecting the game and putting in time. That's true. I think what we see is everyone wants to try and get to that top level so quickly that yeah. they need to, you know, practice first. It yeah. is patience. Yeah, it takes it time. Is. But yeah. yeah, thank you very much, Coach uh, John Mosley, for cool. taking the time out. I know you're a busy man at the moment and mm-hmm. you've probably got many more, more interviews anyway. Uh, yeah. But thank you very much and have a great day and God bless. And thank you for doing this interview. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Jamie. Have a great day. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.